and then uh, we'll take questions after coaches uh, make their opening statement. Coach McCray, good morning. Good morning, Mark. Pleasure to be with you. Well, appreciate your time this morning. Uh, if you can open up and talk about how preseason camp went for you, any uh, new starters that we uh, were not expecting, and talk about the new turf uh, before we go into questions. <laughs> well, we, uh, we've had a chance to get on the new turf a little bit. It's not completed, um, but it's playable and safe. They're finishing some decorations around the edges in the next couple of weeks, but uh, the fact that we play the first two games on the road and don't come in here for three weeks, it's it's really not been a factor, and it should be ready to go for the first home game. So, gotten some use on it already. Excited about having the opportunity to um, have some new facility upgrades around here, and I think it's going to be helpful for a lot of people, not just a football program. So, we're glad about that. Um, you know, preseason has gone um, a little roller coaster up and down. We've had some good days. We had some days certainly we need to do better, and um, you know we got a pretty interesting mix of young men in our program this year. Uh, we do have some veteran guys. I've said that quite a few times that uh, we'll be recognized in the Big South and and here at Gardner-Webb. And then, uh, you know, we've got to develop uh, some quality depth. We've got a lot of young guys. I was just visiting with Mark Rabb and uh, talking about, you know, the 65 guys that we're going to take down to Furman this week. Um, 26 guys out of that 65 have never uh, – played in the game for the running Bulldogs. So it's, uh, you know, some of them are going to play a big factor in the game. Some of them I don't know how much of a factor they'll be in the game. But right now we think they're uh, part of the top 65 that we would have a chance to win a game with. So they're going to go with us. And, uh, you know, it's going to be quite a uh, quite a ride to uh, see how quick these young guys can grow up and give us some help. I think uh, maybe a lot of teams are in our situation. <clears throat> you know, some teams are really veteran. Um I think we're, you know, basically through transition here, but because of some attrition, we're a little imbalanced on our classes. We do have, as we said, some older guys, and and we've got uh, six or seven guys that have graduated December, yet our junior and our sophomore classes seem to be a little small, and our freshman class is, is pretty big. So we're going to have to go ahead and play the young guys uh, until we can recruit some more, and then hopefully we can start redshirting some guys pretty soon. But uh, a lot of familiar faces, I think, um, you know, from the Kenny Cooks to the Lucas Beatties to Juwan Blunts and uh, our tight ends, Cranfield Estes, guys that have played in our league for a little while. And then defensively, our nose guard, O.J. Mao, and Tanner Burks, Bradley Taylor, our inside linebackers, Chad Jeter, Ivan Toomer, who plays corner. Those are guys that we know about. <clears throat> We've had some guys that will you know, be in the secondary that, <clears throat> haven't played a whole bunch. Steven Cristobal has done well at, at safety for us uh, in summer camp. Uh, so that's a, that's a name that, uh, you know, has, has risen to the top. Uh, Aaron Cook has taken over our bandit spot. He did play last year but had a real real good uh, summer camp at outside linebacker. And Jabray Reagan's going to play a defensive end and uh, step into some roles that some older guys left to fill. And he's had a good summer camp. Um, Deontay Swinton, their wide receiver, has had a real good summer camp. He's older, uh, but kind of stays in the shadow of Kenny Cook at times. <clears throat> and then we've had some, some offensive linemen that uh, I think have improved their skills some. I hope it will show uh, on Saturday. But we've had some linemen that are able to play together, played together some last year in that offensive line unit. I think we show, hopefully we'll show more maturity as uh, we head into the first part of the season. So uh, those are some of the guys that uh, – have kind of stood out here in uh, in fall camp. All right, thank you, Coach. Uh, for those who wish to talk to Coach McCray, press star 1 on your phone at any time or click the Q&A link near the top of your browser and click raise hand. We'll begin getting questions for the question queue. And while that happens, Coach, uh, talk about Furman, this week's opponent. Well, Furman is, uh, you know, uh, a, f a football team that uh, really improved as the season went ended up being the defending, you know, Southern Conference champs. They sit right now. Uh, did very well toward the end of the year as a football team that I think uh, started a little bit slow but uh, showed a lot of character. And uh, certainly the coaching staff did a great job. They started out two and four, got it to three and five, ended up seven and five, and then went in the first round of the playoffs against South Carolina State before they lost to. 
the defending champ, North Dakota State. But, uh, you know, a team that returns a lot of guys. They, uh, you know, 17 starters return on both sides of the ball. They are replacing some guys in the kicking game. They had a fine kicker last year. So those chores will go to some young guys. But uh, very, very experienced. A lot of guys back. I think they got some big playmakers at receiver. Uh, their quarterback uh, did not play against us last year, Reese Hannon, but he's an outstanding football player uh, offensively. And uh, then defensively, I think they're very, very strong up front in their front seven on trying to stop the run. And uh, it was just a football team that really got better as the season went. I think right now they're ranked in the top 20, and, and, and well, they should be. So it, it will uh, it'll be a good challenge for us to go down and see where we are with our football team and, and see if our guys will line up and be tough enough to compete uh, against a team that finished very fast last year. Thank you, Coach. At this time, we'll move the questions for Coach McCray. Again, press star one on your phone at any time. We'll click the Q&A link near the top of your browser and click the raise hand if you join via the web. And Coach, first question for you is from Matthew Clark of the Daily Courier. Okay. Hey, Matthew, how are you? Yeah, how are you? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Coach, uh, last year I had a few things uh, I'll probably brief. Uh, you know, last year you had a lot of success against ranked opponents both home and away. Um, are, are you hoping that kind of continues here as you, as you take on a Furman team that appears to be ranked nationally and, uh, and, and does have uh, a lot of, as you said, 17 starters on both sides coming back? Do you, do you feel like last year's success against ranked teams uh, should carry over to this year? Well, I, I, I wish I could say I knew it would. Uh, I, I don't. I think each year is different, and uh, you know we're really going to have to grit our teeth and uh, you know be mature mentally and, and make some real wise decisions. Uh, you know, foot with with our minds to make sure that we're in good position to have an opportunity to make plays against this bunch. But uh, you know that's why you play. You know, it's a great challenge to go on the road and play early and. Uh, you know, they, they're sitting there with a lot of prestige, and, you know, we're the underdog coming in. So it seems as if we embrace that a little bit better than we do uh, anything else. So I hope that'll, you know, I don't like being the underdog. I'd like to be the big boy in the block, but we've got a lot of work to do uh, to get to that position. So uh, we'll roll in there and, and see if we can challenge these guys. And, Coach, the, uh, the kind of follow-up uh, a little bit, there, there's a uh, uh, I guess a big difference in, in rosters here. You know, Furman is, is uh, laced with a lot of upperclassmen uh, and, and a lot of experience, whereas you, as you mentioned uh, earlier, you, you've got guys coming back, but you've got 26 of your players that have never been on the field for Gardner Webb before, and, and you've got a very, very large freshman class and not much in the way of juniors and, and sophomores. Yeah. Is, that, is it concerning at all, or do you hope that they, uh, uh, you know, the, that the class doesn't really matter? At all? Well, no, it's concerning. You know, you don't sleep much this time of year when you look at them out there. But, uh, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, we're a football team that uh, I knew in the summer and spring practice that we were going to have to mature very quickly uh, just with the guys that we had in spring ball that had not played. And then when we added the true freshman class that came in, you know, we're in a position where we still have to continue to depend on those guys to mature as the season goes and make plays for us. So, I mean, we saw it coming down the road, and, uh, you know, we know that, uh, you know, probably our game plan is going to have to be a little more simple than maybe we would like for it to be so that we can get these guys in the game. You know, it's uh, 13 weeks ahead, and um, it's a long season. So, you know, we've got to push these guys to mature each week, and I think, you know, the greatest example that I would talk to our kids about would be a Furman football team last year that improved each and every week. And they got better, and then when it counted, they really won a lot of big ball games. So uh, they would be a good program for us to eyeball and uh, and look at with young players having to play a whole lot. Coach, uh, one more, and I'll, I'll let you get. Uh, you mentioned changes to your game plan, trying to simplify things a little bit. Without being too terribly specific uh, for the sake of uh, Coach Gill and Coach Nichols, who I'm sure are probably listening in, uh, what are what are some of those changes that you plan on uh, that you plan on backing off of against Furman? Well, I think, you know, we'll take all of our base things in. I think the key is just don't try to do too much too early in the ball game until we settle down and and allow uh, our guys to get used to the speed of the game, which is going to be the biggest challenge, I think, from the either, either when we kick off or receive on Saturday night. I think adjusting to the speed in which Furman will uh, have on the field will be the key. And then uh, when things slow down for us a little bit, 
Uh, I think as we get in the second and third quarter, maybe we can do a few more things than we can early in the game, both offensively and defensively. And, uh, you know, if we stay healthy, the older guys are on the field a whole lot, maybe we can do a lot more early. But I think that's going to depend on who we have to play and, and when we have to play them. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take basic game plan and, and take all the uh, extra icing on the cake to go with and see how far we can get it uh, on Friday on Saturday night. Very good, Coach. Coach, I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Matthew. And Coach, the next question for you is from Nick Pierce of the Liberty Flames Sports Network. Hey, good morning, Carol. Um, hey, Nick, how are you? Pretty good, thanks. Uh, a couple <laughs> quick things for you. Um, the turnovers really hurt you guys a year ago. Uh, had more than anyone else in the conference. So what have, what have you kind of done to address that uh, going into the season? Well, we started very early, you know, day one, talking about possession of the football. And uh, we, we've had a much better camp of uh, just conscious – uh, with the football from uh, the very start of practice, uh, whether we're kicking or whether we're running the football or trying to, uh, you know, attempt some passes out there and understand that, uh, you know, we were horrendous. And uh, it's really uh, unbelievable we won the games we did. But there were only two teams in FCS that had more turnovers than the running Bulldogs last year. So uh, we, we've definitely made that a point of emphasis uh, from the time spring ball started until uh, – you know, yesterday's practice ended, and we'll continue to do that in the next few days and, and hope that that focus on that football security will uh, play in our favor on Saturday night. It usually always is a big factor early in the season, and I feel sure it'll be a big factor against Furman. I know you said about a month ago you were losing sleep over your secondary. Are, are you sleeping any easier now that you're through camp? No, not really. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, Ivan Toomer's had a real good camp, and then, uh, you know, we've got – a handful of other guys back there that uh, you know are going to be playing a lot for the first time. So we're we're going to play a lot of guys. We're going to put them out there in in different uh, scenarios so that they can get some game experience and uh, and hope those guys can uh, grow up as we go. And probably the biggest concern is I think Furman's quarterback is uh, is an outstanding football player. He's just selected captain of the team, and uh, you know he's got a live arm, got a lot of leadership qualities. So. Uh, the challenges will be early and often for our secondary, I think, uh, against Furman Saturday night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. And I'm not seeing any more questions for you, Coach. So we'll let you go. Uh, as always, All right. thanks for joining us, and good luck Saturday at Furman. Thanks, Mark. We look forward to representing the Big South against the Southern Conference, and uh, wish all the other coaches good luck this week. Y'all have a good day. Thanks. You too, Coach. All right. Bye-bye.